DeepSeek just launched their new model, which is V3. As you can see, they have provided their benchmark on X.com as well as on their website. In the architecture, it's using MOE, which is mixture of experts. DeepSeek V2.5 was also using MOE, but Quen 2.5 or Llama 3.1 are using dense architecture. And as for Claude and GPT-4, they are closed source. And that's not all. It has a total number of 671 billion parameters, as you can see here. And as for what I'm concerned, Concerned with is can DeepSeek V3 beat Claude 3.5 Sonnet? And as you can see, DeepSeek V3 is comparable or higher in score as compared to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And the part that I really want to test today is the coding capabilities of V3. As you can see, V3 takes lead in majority of the scores, but we still need to verify these benchmarks. For those of you who don't know what is a mixture of experts, so I have a really good guide here from this website, Exploring Language Models. And as you can see, in a mixture of experts model, the input goes to expert number one and then it goes to a sub expert in the expert number one domain and it keeps on moving to the experts of the specific domain or the specific topic related to the problem until you get the output after n number of layers and to n number of experts. So you must be wondering how is this helpful? So actually DeepSeek V3 is a combination of different sub models trained on different expertise. So let's say layer two and layer six are trained on punctuation, but within punctuation, both layers are trained for different data that makes them the expert of that data this way you can have experts of each and every category or piece of information in your model so this gives you a really big scope and a really accurate result so with that said let's move to the DeepSeek v3 api usage so as you can see on your screen let me zoom in a bit so you get 60 tokens per second which is three times faster than v2 you get enhanced capabilities, the API compatibility is still intact, and the paper is fully open source. And here are some benchmarks where you can see that V3 is on top in most of the benchmarks and it is leading the market. But we will be confirming and consolidating these benchmarks later on in this video. But for now, let's see what is new in V3. So you get a 671 billion mixture of experts parameters. You get a 37 billion activated parameters and it is trained on 14.8 trillion high quality tokens. And if you want to read more about DeepSeek V3, you can go to their GitHub page, which is right here, this link. And if you want to read the paper, you can just click here and you can download the paper. It should look something like this. And if you scroll down, they even give you the details about the GP used and how much it actually cost them to train this new model. So it's around $5.576 million. As for the API pricing, until February 8, the pricing will be same as V2. And from onwards, it's going to increase a little bit, but it's still cheaper than other models out there. And as you can see, DeepSeek is on top, beating Claude, GPT-40, Gemini 1.5 Pro, and Lama, and other open source models like Quem and Mistral. For now, the DeepSeek V3 API for input with a cache head is around $0.014 per 1 million tokens. And if it's a cache miss, which means if it's without cache, it's going to charge you around 14 cents per million tokens. And as for the output, it's going to charge you 28 cents per million tokens. Now, that is a lot of introduction and theory. Let's dive right into it and actually see how we can assess this locally on a machine or how we're going to test it online on the web app. So without further chatter, let's dive right in. Hi and welcome back to Skill Curve. This is your host Shamriz and we're here at the DeepSeek web chat and I'll be pasting the link in the description or you can just go to the website and go and click here start now and it will take you to this platform which is their online chat and if you want to use their API you can just go to their website and click on assess API and this should take you here where you can create your API so I have just created this v3 API and I'm going to connect this inside my visual studio code so here inside my visual studio code what I'm going to do is I have an extension named continue.dev which is the one that I love when I need to connect to open source models or models using API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to add a chat model and here I will be choosing DeepSeek as it is already chosen and DeepSeek Coder or you can just go with DeepSeek Chat and then here I will be pasting in the API key. Once you have the API key pasted, you can just click connect and this should connect you to the DeepSeek Chat with V3 model intact. And as you can see, it is working and we can generate code using DeepSeek Chat here, which is really great. So this was just a way of how you can get this locally on your Visual Studio code. But for this video, I'm going to use their web app because I want to check out this DeepThink feature as well as this search feature. So what I'm going to do is 
is I'm going to start with logical reasoning questions with this deep thing feature on. So I have this website for LSAT prep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this question from here like this and I'm going to go and paste that right there and hit enter. So there you go. You got the answer, which is D. And if you go back to the website, you can see that the correct answer is D here as well. And just to be really sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and copy another question from here. And the answer is A. Let's go back to the website. And if I expand the explanation here, you can see that D is the correct response, which means that it was a fail. I think this was a 50-50, but I still want to test this out without the deep thing feature on. Maybe the deep thing feature is overthinking so let's go and try this out and there you go the answer is d so i think the deep thing feature can be harmful in some scenarios and if i paste any question here regarding logical thinking without using the deep thing feature it should work so let's go and test this theory and there you go the answer is c let's go and check this out so for question number six we have the explanation and the response. And as you can see that C is the correct response. So yes, the model is working completely fine, but do not use their deep think feature because it overthinks. So do use this deep think feature, but very carefully. So with that said, I want to move with some coding questions. So I have two different websites. One is Edabit, which is a really great platform for coding challenges. And I also have this other platform, which is hackerearth.com. So as for Edabit, I have chosen Python. As for difficulty, I've chosen expert and I can choose any of these problems. So let's go with this problem right there. So we have the question here. This is the example and we should get a result once we paste in the code right here so let's go and do that so i'm gonna go and copy all of this back here i'm gonna go and open up a new chat and let's go and paste in the question and one more thing that i want to paste in here is the function name which should be this i'm gonna go and say the method name should be there you go so let's go and hit enter and this should solve this problem so there were some issues with this old code because it was importing the math library and using the abs or absolute function from that library but here on edabit you cannot import any libraries you have to do everything custom so what i did instead is i told it that only use custom code no importing and it went on and created this code for us so let's go and check this out copy i'm gonna go back here let's paste that right there and check there you go the test was a really great pass so let's go and go for another challenge this time i'm gonna go with javascript and it's gonna be expert as well and i'm gonna go with the fiscal code so let's go and grab the whole question here this one is going to be a really big challenge but i still want to test this out and here in code i'm gonna go and copy this and i'm gonna say this is the starter piece of code and there you go it started generating the code for us and as you can see is just doing a really great job at that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna again skip the test cases and i'm just gonna go and copy the code before the test cases let's go back to edabit and here i'm just gonna select everything and paste the code let's check out the results wow this is a success and i'm really amazed at how good this new deep seek v3 is so for the next test we have this problem from hackerearth.com so i'm just gonna go and copy everything from here let's copy that back here on my deep seek web chat i'm gonna paste that and hit enter and there you go everything is working fine let's copy the code and back here on hacker earth website we can change the compiler from c language to all the way here to python 3.10 let's go and paste in the code and let's go and compile and test there you go the sample code test is actually passing all the cases as well as the time taken the memory it used and the language the expected output should be zero and it is zero which is really great. So I think this is a pass for us. We can submit the code now. So with that resolved, we have our final thoughts about DeepSeek V3. I think this is one of the best models out there right now. And it just got released this week and it is doing way better than any model out there. We went on and evaluated it on logical reasoning and coding questions as well. And it performed outstandingly good. And I would highly suggest you guys to try this out and use this as it is an open source model and quite cheap so give it a try and i hope this video was helpful if you found this video insightful hit that like button share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below ring the notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video till then stay curious and keep exploring